articulating it by defining everything in a particular way, right? And I'm going to give you a very simple thought experiment. Okay. Say right now, I am, uh, I start feeling like I'm having a heart attack, right? I'm, I'm just like, oh, my chest, oh, you know, I'm having a heart attack, right? And I call out and I say, is there a doctor in the house, right? And then right there, right, somebody kicks that door open, comes in, and it's actually Muhammad Hijab, yeah? <laughs> He's like, I'm a doctor. I'm here to help you. And I'm like, you're, you're not a doctor. He's like, I am a doctor because I'm getting a PhD in theology from Birmingham University, which he is, right? And I say to him, yeah, listen, my heart's killing me, yeah? I need a medical doctor. Now, yeah. what's happened here is the word doctor has been misused. Hmm. Doctor, when hijab mentions the word doctor, he's referring to anyone with a PhD. When I'm referring to a doctor, I'm referring to a medical doctor. Now, the reason why I'm making this distinction is because when you don't define th things in a very precise, clear way, it leads to confusion. Evolution as a basic idea is well known. It's been written about, philosophized about, discussed for millennia. Evolution is a fact. We know things adapt to their environments. We know the fossil record today is very different from a million years ago, from a hundred million years ago, from 500 million years ago. We know that life itself is very different at different stages. We know that human beings can actually be involved in evolutionary processes. We know other organisms can be involved in evolutionary processes. We know that we can adapt to the environment, which is Darwin, Darwinian evolution. We also know that we can adapt the environment to our needs, which is non-Darwinian evolution, right? So the first thing I always like to do is differentiate between evolution and Darwinian evolution. And the reason why I do that is because Darwinists will use the evidence for evolution as evidence for Darwinian evolution. But Darwinian evolution is very different. Darwinian evolution is the idea that all of life evolved because of two primary factors. The, the first one is random mutations and the second one is natural selection. So natural selection plus random mutations created all of life. As Richard Dawkins says it, it created us body and mind, right? Now, I can show you right now in the lab that if you apply antibiotics to certain organisms, that those organisms will develop resistance against them. Bacteria will, will adapt, right? And funnily enough, it actually adapts in a non-Darwinian way, but it can also adapt in a Darwinian way. We know that the organisms which are fitter survive so we know natural selection of the process exists but what these guys are saying is that that process which we see in the lab that small process it explains the human brain it explains the human eye it explains the invisible octopus it explains the, the dancing bee that comes back into the hive into a, a wriggling eight shape and tells the other bees which direction to go get the pollen it explains how termites can make these massive colonies with air conditioning and ants have laws of apostasy and they have wars and battlefield medicines and all this crazy stuff the problem is darwinian evolution does not have the evidence that it needs to make the claims that the people who who subscribe to it want to make which is the idea that all of this is due to natural selection plus random mutations right and that is the crux of the issue now i want to i want to go over one more definition which is very important yeah um, it's the definition of the formal fallacy of equivocation, the fallacy of equivocation. Okay. Equivocation is exactly what happened between me and hijab, where I'm saying the word doctor and he's using the word doctor and it's not equivalent, right. but it's being used in that sense. When I ask a Darwinist an evidence, a piece of evidence for how is it that our brain has the functionality that it does how did this develop how did this generate how how did any of these things happen 
And that Darwinist says, well, you see, what we understand in the lab is that when we apply antibiotics to medicine, to, to bacteria, then bacteria which are more likely to have the adaptive features to survive, survive, and others don't. And those are selected. And then they'll give examples of sheep. You know, in the winter, it gets extremely cold. You have sheep and they have a random mutation uh, when they when they reproduce and that random mutation leads to one of the offspring having thicker wool than the other the, that random mutation leads to a adaptive feature which then as it gets extremely cold all the rest of the sheep die this sheep lives on natural selection for random mutation that basic observation which we see is used to explain the brain is used to explain everything else which is why the other biologists, which are a minority, by the way, they, they say Darwinism does not explain the survival of the fittest, right? Sorry, it doesn't explain the arrival of the fittest. It only explains the survival of the fittest. It only explains as a background process, okay, if you're fitter to survive in your environment, then you will survive. It, 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 it's, not, it's not that powerful as a theory. It... it facilitates when adaptive features come but is that is it really the case that these come through random mutations so there's all this disagreement that happens right amongst biologists about neo-darwinism now still and i had this debate in speaker's corner um two days ago uh where you know there was this guy who was saying to me well what you mentioned the national academy of sciences uh you know they have their museum they have their whatever you know 99 or whatever percent of them or or all of them believe in basically uh darwinian evolution or whatever it is right um and i said to him well it doesn't need to be like you know they have 2000 people and uh, whatever number of nobel prizes i said it could be 200000 right it could be 2 million scientists it could be all the scientists in the world believe in neo darwinism that doesn't mean it's a fact Yes, it's a, a valid theory, but it doesn't mean it's a fact because for it to be a fact, number one, you need that empirical evidence. And right now we have, you know, a lot of problems in terms of the lack of evidence that the Darwinists actually have. And secondly, science is not about absolutes, right? It's not about absolutes. Science always changes. There's always paradigm shifts. There's always these absolute um, what they say, gestalt shifts. Um, the way to describe it is: Have you ever seen an image which looks like a duck or a rabbit? And when you look at it from another perspective, it's like a woman with a hat. It's like an illusion, right? On TikTok all the time. Like, do you see? Do you see uh, a guitar, or do you see hands waving? I've seen those. Yeah, before. two faces looking at each other, or a vase, right? So this is known as a gestalt shift. Yeah. When you're staring at something and you're like, it's a vase, it's a vase. Yeah, I'm sure it's a vase. Then you think and it switches. The image switches in your head, right? According to some philosophers, that is the way that scientific theories compete with each other, right? They're literally paradigm shifts. The same evidence, the exact same evidence can fit an alternative theory. Interpretation. Almost yes. equally, right? So one of the things that I do is these, the new atheists and the skeptics and these people, they're all about, you know, look at you religious people with your certainty and we're not certain about anything and we're open-minded. And I'm like, well, okay, that's great. Let, let's be a little bit open-minded about Darwinism and let's look at these conceptual problems, these scientific problems, these philosophical problems. Oh, you're a science denier. It's like, wait, wait, wait a minute. You want to be skeptical about everything. You want to be critical about everything. Well, why not be critical about something we've been hearing as children? And one of the things that I do point out is there's a lot of propaganda. There is a lot of propaganda. I had a debate almost 10 years ago now with a very famous Darwinist, right? He's one of the new atheists, Aaron Ra. Uh, he's not as popular now as he was 10 years ago. He's super popular back then. Uh, and he was right at the forefront with Richard Dawkins and all these guys. And if you go back, and watch that debate from 2016 in Texas, you will see that's exactly what Aaron Ra did. When I'm asking for evidence for Darwinian evolution, he's giving evidence of evolution. And I pointed out this is a fallacy of equivocation. And I have a prediction. I have a debate upcoming, uh, inshallah, with this um, fake 
charlatan who calls himself Professor Dave. I guarantee you, and I'm saying this right now, and I even told him in an email to watch the debate that I had with Aaron Ra because I'm going to use the same argument. He is going to do that. He's going to use the evidence for evolution as evidence for Darwinism because the debate is, is Darwin evolution a fact? So fundamentally, every single time, every single time you argue with a Darwinist, it's not complicated, Ramsey. Mm. It's very simple. The main way they argue is by using the evidence for evolution as evidence for Darwinism. And all we need to do is show them the evidence for evolution is not the evidence for Darwinism. It can indirectly support it in some circumstances, but that doesn't mean the evidence for evolution is the same evidence for Darwinism. You can put it another way. Evolution is an observation and Darwinism is a theory. That's one way of putting it, right? Uh, another way of actually thinking about it is this. Is if, if evolution and Darwinism is the same thing, which is what Aaron Ra kept arguing, right? If evolution and Darwinism is the same thing, why on earth, why on God's green earth are there biologists who don't believe in neo-Darwinism? And they refer to themselves as evolutionists, but they don't believe in neo-Darwinism. In fact, just uh, about two weeks ago, I facilitated a discussion between Massimo Piglucci, who is a, um, you know, a neo-Darwinist, and Scott Turner, who is a non-neo-Darwinist, a non-Darwinist, and quite critical of, of Darwinism, and he believes in the third way of evolution. He's an evolutionist, but he's not a Darwinist. You can go see the debate on my channel. Now, I'm not even picking a side and saying neo-Darwinists win or third way of evolution guys win. I'm, I'm not even picking a battle. All I'm simply saying is evolution is not the same thing as Darwinism. These are two different things. And the evidence for one cannot be used as the evidence for the other. But by the way, no matter how many times you clarify this, the die in the wool atheists will still say the same thing. They will not change their minds because it's the only argument they fundamentally have. But obviously, much yeah. more credible, much more academic Darwinists like Piglucci and there's obviously others as well, you know, they'd be, they'd be very open and honest and direct. And, but it's people like Aaron Ra who, you know, they, they love to conflate these things because they're propagandists at the end of the day. They're not academics like these other guys. They're propagandists at the end of the day. Yeah. And they're there to essentially get people away from God. Because why is it that the people arguing for, uh, Darwinism also happened to be militant atheists. Is it right. just a coincidence? Right. That's something to think about.